seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift up. plus 35 seconds and counting and we are well on our way to space. Our 53rd Electron rocket has taken flight and it's headed to orbit with its payloads for Kinase. Up next, you'll hear the call from max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure, the point in flight where Electron experiences peak structural load. The GNC operator on console will give us the call that max Q is approaching and then we'll hear for confirmation that we have passed through that gate. Just not wrong. Cleared max Q. And there we have it. Confirmation Electron has passed Just through max Q. We are now at 19 kilometers altitude and traveling over 2,700 kilometers an hour. And next up, we have three key events main engine cutoff, or MECO, stage separation, and stage two engine ignition. A MECO is when all nine Rutherford engines shut down to prepare for the next phase in flight, and after those engines shut down, Electron's first and second stages separate. Then finally, the vacuum-optimized Rutherford engine on Electron's second stage ignites to propel the mission through to an elliptical transfer orbit. Now, those three events uh, all take place in a quick succession over just a few seconds, so let's listen in for those calls. Fifteen seconds to staging. Entered burnout detect mode. Miko confirmed. Stage separation confirmed. Stage two ignition confirmed. We are now T plus two minutes and 45 seconds into the mission, and as you've just heard, Electron has had a successful MECO, stage sap, and second stage ignition. Stage two Telemetry data up. shows that Electron is now moving at over 8,200 kilometers per hour and has just passed 100 kilometers above Earth. Up next is fairing jettison when Electron's nose cone, which is protecting our payloads today, will split in two and fall away. We might see this happen on screen, so let's keep an eye out for that. Fairing jettison succeeded. And that was the call out for fairing jettison from Mission Control, exposing the payload to space ahead of deployment. Stage two Electron is traveling nominal. at over 8,500 kilometers an hour at an altitude of 125 kilometers, with just a few minutes remaining in the second stage burn. Now, if you take a look at the graph on the right-hand side of your screen, then you can see Electron's current trajectory compared with our expected trajectory. And we like those two lines to be as close as possible, and that's what helps Electron's precise payload insertion accuracy. Discharge nominal. Some of you may be wondering how IoT satellites impact your daily lives. 
These satellites connect devices globally, even in areas without regular internet. In day-to-day -day life, this means you can track deliveries worldwide and carry out credit card transactions, even if you're stranded in the middle of the South Island of New Zealand. They also support things like your smart home assistant or fitness watch, allowing them to stay connected anywhere for real-time updates or alerts. Now, one of the things that sets Electron apart from many other rocket designs is the use of electric pumps in the Rutherford engines. And those pumps Going are powered by batteries, which deplete in power throughout the flight. Once we use up all the available energy in one set, we'll switch to a fresh battery to complete the mission all the way through to orbit. And that maneuver is referred to as the battery hot swap. After the first set is depleted, Electron won't need those batteries for the remainder of the journey, so we jettison the depleted batteries to save mass in the final stages of flight. That's coming up soon, so keep an eye on your screen and see if you can see the shiny silver batteries eject and fall away. HP discharge, nominal approaching hot swap. Throttling down. Battery jettison confirmed. And that was the call for battery hot swap on the second stage, confirmed as successful by mission hot control across the nets. Up next is the final stage of stage two flight, including SECO or second engine cutoff, followed by kick stage separation. This is where the kick stage carrying the five Kine satellites separates from Electron's second stage. That final engine cutoff is coming up just shy of nine minutes, so only about three and a half minutes to go. Stage 2 is safe. Holding nominal. Now, electric pumps on Rutherford offer other advantages other than just a simplification of design. Now, these groundbreaking pumps can run the tanks all the way dry, allowing the second stage to squeeze every last bit of performance out of it during flight. And those pumps on Electron's second stage are currently powering us at uh, speeds of over 19,000 kilometers an hour. Some keen watch from Flight 50 will remember some fun flips and rotations the kick stage performed during payload deployment for the last Kinase mission. The kick stage's reaction control thrusters achieved this by expelling precise amounts of cold pressurized gas through small thrusters to rotate the kick stage and control its orientation and position in space. It's this system that's responsible for our industry leading deployment precision. It's now T plus 8 minutes, 18 seconds, and we're fast approaching second engine cutoff. And just before that happens, the Rutherford engine will begin to throttle down in preparation for shutdown, which is scheduled to take place around nine minutes into the mission. So let's listen in and wait for that confirmation. Seco confirmed. 